Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship today. Glad that all of you are here on this beautiful day. A reminder that our service is being live streamed to the church Facebook page. It's being recorded, which means it will be posted to the website and YouTube page also. So a reminder that online worship is always an option. It's the end of August. I know, right? So the summer is wrapping up which I love summer, and I also like anticipate the routine of the academic year, too. So that's the vibe I'm going with right now. Um, But next weekend is our last Sunday of one service at 9 o'clock for the summer. The following weekend, we go to two services, 8 and 10, because next weekend is Labor Day. One service at 9, and then the next weekend, two services, 8 and 10. That is September 10th. We will have a pancake breakfast that day. So between services, there'll be pancakes and breakfast meat and fruit and fellowship and all that good stuff. So please plan on joining us for that pancake breakfast. If you come to 8 o'clock, you can just stay. If you are coming on 10 o'clock, you can come a little early and enjoy some food and fellowship. Sunday school officially starts on September 17th, but we're encouraging Sunday school families to attend the pancake breakfast on the 10th. So we would love to see everybody there. I'll have some Sunday School registration forms printed out too. You can also click on the link that's sent in the weekly email to register for Sunday School. Ages, kids ages 3 through 5th grade. And then there's also a link in the weekly email to register for confirmation. Typically it grades 6 through 8 here, but it can, there's wiggle room to that. So if you have questions about a youth or young person in your life attending confirmation, let me know. Again, all those links are in the weekly email. There's also a link in the weekly email for signing up to be a worship assistant in the fall. With two services comes more people that we need to help with the services. So um, check into that if you're willing to sign up. If you're not an online sign-up person, you can call Carrie, our administrator, or send her a message, and she can plug you in where that would be helpful. ELCA Youth Gathering, kids who are currently in 8th through 12th grade talk to me if you know of anybody in your life who's interested in going. The young adult gathering is also happening for young adults um, ages 18 to 35. Talk to me if you have any questions. We're getting those registration things together. And I think I'm going to leave it there with like the information overload part. Read through everything in your bulletin insert. Read through the weekly email. Please ask questions if you have any. Remind each other of the switch back to 8 and 10 o'clock coming up the weekend after next. And then here's an, our educational moment of the morning. So last weekend, if you were here, you'll, you, might, you will remember that we were shuffling with bulletins and hymnals because of unforeseen circumstances. And a few people after the service said to me, I really liked using the hymnal. That was kind of nice. And I was like, it was kind of, other than like the, I had a hard time juggling a little, coordinating. I have a coordination problem in general. But um, just a tip. So like for years, we've put the, hymn numbers in the bulletin next to the songs. So if you would like to use the hymnal to sing along with the song, you can do that. It says ELW, that's code for Evangelical Lutheran Worship. That's the name of the hymnal. So if you would like to open the hymnal and sing along to those songs, you are welcome to do that. It's always there, um, or it has been for years. The exception is like, like with things that um, we use that aren't in the hymnal, then obviously there won't be a hymn number. And then with liturgy too, because that's too confusing with the little numbers and the big, so whatever. Anyway, hymns, ELW number. If you want to look it up in hymnal, you can. So there you go. You know, some of you are like, oh, I never noticed those numbers, right? Um, and others are like, I'm good with just the bulletin. So whatever helps you worship, do that. And that is all I have for real. We will take a deep breath together. I invite you to take a deep breath. To center yourself in this time and in this space as we begin our worship together. I invite you to stand for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of Christ that we may gladly minister to all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The reading is from Psalm 138, read responsively. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down before your holy temple and give thanks to your name, for your steadfast love and the faithfulness, for you have exalted your name, and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. They shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be God. The reading is from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the re renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Word of God, word of life. This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, 
and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So Jesus asked his disciples two very important questions in this gospel reading. The first question he asks is, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And then he later directly more asks his followers, who do you say that I am? And both of these questions, they have the same intention. The intention and focus is on God's expanding ministry, on God's mission through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And this first question that Jesus asked his disciples is about what they have heard from others about how they experienced Jesus. And we hear that some saw Jesus following in the way of John the Baptist, like seeking repentance and turning back to God. Perhaps even John the Baptist reincarnate, some thought. Others, we hear, saw him as Elijah, a great prophet who literally fought for God in their history as a people. And then still others saw Jesus as Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets who continually sought to turn people back to God after they had gone astray. So clearly there was something about Jesus that resonated with the history of God and God's people, even if the people didn't really fully understand who Jesus was yet. But then in his more direct second question, he asks his followers, but who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Who do these people that spend a lot of their time with Jesus believe Jesus really is. So what Jesus is really asking them is, like, do you see God working in me? And then Peter's response of, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God, is just right on target. So this is definitely one of Peter, Peter's finer moments, and I think it's a moment worth acknowledging and celebrating, especially for a guy like Peter. So it's important that we give him some credit today, because while well, he gave the perfect response to Jesus' question today, he doesn't always do that great, right? If anything, people would say that Peter was far from perfect. We recently heard about how Peter was the one who was walking on the water, which was great and awesome, and, and then he started to sink, though. And then he was the one who denied Jesus three times. And then in our verses right after this gospel reading, Jesus rebukes Peter and he calls him a stumbling block. So when Jesus says, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. We know that Peter got something right that time. We know because Jesus' response is one of affirmation and blessing and of promise. Jesus responds to Peter by saying, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. So Peter knew the answer to the question, who do you say that I am? And these questions that Jesus asks his followers become even more eye-opening, I think, when we imagine this time and we take into context this time and place of Matthew's gospel. So if you're like a history person, you might like this little like, piece of information. The 16th chapter of the gospel of Matthew, it, it reminds us, that Jesus has taken his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And geographically, this is a place that's near a natural spring. It's one of the largest sources for the Jordan River. So it was a, a popular area. And because of this, the Greeks had built a shrine to the pagan god Pan in this place. And then the Romans also had a temple there that was built in honor of the emperor. So in the shadows of these temples, these temples to other gods, Jesus asked them this very direct question about his identity and their allegiance to him. Jesus is asking them if they are willing to claim him as the ultimate power over all the others as the Son of God. So this is a radical thing for Jesus to do, both politically and religiously, because to the Romans back then, the emperor is God. And so for them to claim God, Jesus, as the ultimate power, it kind of just puts Jesus in this place, like this crosshairs of those in the worldly power versus godly power, that kind of stuff. 
So G Peter, though, yet he still makes this powerful proclamation. He still says, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. So while Peter and the other disciples, they don't yet totally clearly understand what this fully means, Peter's answer to Jesus' question is a powerful proclamation, a proclamation that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is the ultimate power. And I think this question is important for all of us to think about today. Today, Jesus asks us a question, too, that we should all know the answer to. Our answers might be a little bit different right now, but the overall picture would be the same if we were to answer that question that Jesus asks his followers. Who do you say that I am? And like Peter in today's reading, we too can assert with confidence that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Because when we confess Jesus to be the Messiah, the Son of the living God, we are saying that nothing, not even suffering or death, could keep God from loving us. And when we confess Jesus to be the Messiah, the Son of the living God, we are saying that God enters into our brokenness and imperfection and gives us grace upon grace, no strings attached. When we confess Jesus to be the Messiah, the Son of the living God, we acknowledge that Jesus is always on the side of the vulnerable, the stranger, the hungry, seeking justice and peace. And when we confess together as a church that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and we see that there is love and grace and forgiveness that just can't be held back, then we become the church that Jesus talks about today. A church that is so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. So you can just think of how powerful and exciting that can be. Because being a church that confesses Jesus to be the Messiah, the Son of the living God, by doing that, we have seen God at work in this place through people, through things, through events, and we are grateful for that. And yes, of course, like Peter, sometimes we can do better. We always can do better. In fact, there are many ways in which we need to do better, right? We live in a world where the church always needs to be in the business of proclaiming that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. We know that we won't always get it right. I won't always get it right. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. And I'm sorry to say that none of you are perfect either. You probably won't be too surprised too when I say that the church isn't always perfect. The church doesn't always get it right either. So we may not be perfect, but we are promised the perfect love of a forgiving God who is at work in our lives and in our church. And so our response to Jesus' question of who do you say that I am is one that expresses proclamation, proclaims and asserts that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And in that good news, we have hope that God will continue to work in us so that we too may be a church that is so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. So is not that the same question that we ask ourselves each and every day as we journey with Jesus? As followers of Christ, we ask ourselves, you know, is Jesus the ultimate power in our lives? Is Jesus the ultimate authority in our lives? Do we proclaim and assert that Jesus is the Son of God, the Son, the Messiah? So you can ask yourselves these questions maybe as you go throughout your week. Do people experience God, that God, the God that we believe in, when they see how you live your lives, what you do and what you say? Do people experience that God that you believe in and you place your trust in when they hear what you say, when they see how you live your lives? Do you got that question to take it with you today to, for this week? And you can ask yourselves too, are you Christ for your neighbor? And will those who interact with you on a daily basis know that you do believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God? So these are big questions to ponder. They're big things to think about, even bigger questions to live out day by day as we follow Jesus in our world. Because we know that there are still powers in our lives that claim ownership over us. But Paul helps us out in that reading from Romans. Paul helps us out when he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, 
so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And Paul goes on to remind us that as God's people, we are one body in Christ. And with Jesus as our head, all parts are one whole, and we are called to care for one another in spite of our differences. So we are called to live out our faith, to proclaim that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, to use those gifts that God has given us. We are called to follow Jesus above all others. So loved children of God, when we live beyond those divisions that others create around us, when we cling to those promises of love and grace we have in our Savior, the Son of the living God, we show others that God's love is at work in our world. And when we ask others, who do you say that I am? We can pray that others will say that we are followers of Christ. Because after all, Christ came into our world to be our Savior, to unite all of God's beloved children into one body. So who do we say that Jesus is? Jesus is the Son of Man, the Son of the living God. When we live into these promises and that belief, we proclaim the good news of Jesus to those around us. We make God's love known in our world. And we give thanks to God for that. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and for all of creation. Inspire your church to pursue righteousness in its ministry, O God. Equip us to share your compassion that unites us as one in faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Guide the leaders of nations and towns, militaries and courts, to ways of peace. Let your call for justice reach all people and bring deliverance to where there is oppression. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Show your steadfast love and faithfulness to those in despair. Increase their strength. Care for all who feel low. Keep safe any in the midst of trouble and protect vulnerable people from harm. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Encourage those who offer their gifts and talents and service to your church. Energize us so that we may be transformed in sharing your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all the saints, death is overcome in Christ's resurrection. We rejoice with the faithful departed. Sustain us in hope until we come at last to our heavenly home. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say amen. amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. 
Come, Holy Spirit, and let the church say amen. Amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son, through Jesus, with Jesus, in Jesus, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the table. There is a place for you. Please be seated. If you are worshiping online, I invite you to get your bread, your crackers, your wine, your grape juice prepared. If you are taking communion in your pews with your little cups, I invite you to get those out. I invite you to peel off that top layer of the cup that goes to the wafer. If you're worshiping online to eat your bread or your crackers, this is the body of Christ given for you. If you're worshiping with somebody who does not yet receive the sacrament and would like a blessing, I invite you to say the words, you are a loved child of God while you make the sign of the cross on their forehead or on the space in front of them. I invite you to peel off the next layer of the cup that goes to the grape juice. If you're worshiping online, to drink your wine or your grape juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. If you would like to come forward to receive the sacrament, I invite you to follow the instructions of our ushers. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
lift you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our deep, dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.